with a good looking window of weather ahead of us, we are off to Fox Glacier to catch up with Nathan from Mountain Helicopters. As usual, Nathan dropped us off near a great looking campsite. It didn't take long before we had set up camp and we were off looking for some animals. And it wasn't long before we were spotting tar. Seen a pretty good group of tar over here. Looks like the good ball makes them, so go and check it out, eh? but you're really looking for something a little bit bigger so I'm going to give these ones a miss today. And just like that, day two was upon us. We crawled out of our icy tents before daylight and set off with high expectations. After a big morning on the hill, the stomachs were rumbling, and we decided it was time for a much-deserved lunch break. 
What do you got there, Brad? Absolute wilderness. Is that your go-to? Wilderness stew. A rich beef mince stew with green beans and potato. It's dry, eh? Yeah. It's probably already frozen. Looks like sick. Tastes pretty good, eh? Warms your old tummy up. Our freeze-dried meals disappeared fast, as we were both eager to carry on with our hunt. We knew with the amount of mature bulls around, it was only a matter of time before we saw one worth taking. here, about 400 yards away. There's a really good ball in there. Hopefully it's a shooter we're going to have a look. Let's go. Right, so we've just closed the gap on this ball. We've got him down to 330 yards and he looks like a ripper. So Brad's going to have a smack at it. See how we get on. Let's go mate. You've just shot the bull tar of your lifetime. Brad had just pulled off a beautiful 330 yard shot to secure this very impressive bull. Upon arriving at the dead bull, the tape measure revealed he was over the magical 13 inch mark and appeared to be around eight and a half years old. We had enough time to take some photos, cape them out, and bone out some meat, then descending back towards camp just before darkness fell. With some discussion that night around camp and a couple of whiskies, we hatched a plan to try and find a chamois buck the next morning. We woke to an average looking morning, and with a pink tinge to the sky, it looked like a snow dump was on the way. Just out here trying to secure a chamois. The weather's just started closing, so just found a cave up the bank here. Gonna try and pull on in. Down the cover for a little bit. It passes over, it's got quite heavy access. So. Pretty cool looking country behind here, but you can't see any of it now, so yeah, get up in there and shove her up. By late morning, the snow flurries had cleared, and we found these two young, promising bucks watching nervously over the valley below. Shortly afterwards, Brad spotted this mature buck holding a large group of does and young ones in the tussock below. With a bit of assessment, we decided he was a shooter.
get just keep those six there, I think we'll have a bit of speed on them. Okay. Pretty stoked. Shot my first chamois buck just over the lease. So I'm gonna get in and retrieve them. So. With the dominant buck on the ground, it's almost like these young fellas sensed an open vacancy and began their descent to the valley floor. Well, shit, here we go. Here yeah, to shot my first chamois buck. Just measured them at uh, 9 inches, so they're yeah, pretty, pretty stoked. Um, yeah, cheers, Phil. Thank All you, right, man. Huh? Bloody awesome. Congratulations. There's a bit of a cock off on the first shot, as, you'll, as you might see in the video. A little bit high, slightly high, eh? Just, yeah. just skimmed his, um, probably just come through here, really, didn't it? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, barreled him on the next one, so 470 yards. Yeah, pretty cool. Just just got in before this wind, didn't we? Yeah. It, yeah, then the wind bloody picked up, so that was awesome, man. Good on you, mate. Well done. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah, it's a nice These two characters really put on a show for us, and they never stopped displaying their dominance to each other. As soon as we finished the head skinning and butchering, it was time to gain some altitude and start making our way back towards camp. As we climbed up onto a tussock bench, only 500 metres from camp, I spotted this great looking bull making his way back to the bluffs. And I realised this was the third box on Brad's list to tick, a full skin for the floor. As darkness was approaching very fast, there was no time to waste, so we got set up for the shot. Good 
again. Yeah, we get the skin. Yep. In all my years of hunting, I've never seen a hunter achieve so many firsts in one trip and some lovely trophies at that. Had a pretty impressive day today. Shot a nine inch shimmy and um, head skin that ball. And then just had a bit of a bleed up and uh, make the camp. Come up over a brow, just back behind, behind the lake back there and um, we'll spot at this star. One's for the uh, for the floor, so yeah, it should be nice. Get them all tanned up. As day three came to an end, we found ourselves reflecting on an amazing few days in the Alps. With a few photos for the album, we skinned and butchered this bull well into darkness. After a small sleep in the next morning, we snapped a few more pics, packed up camp and waited for our kerosene taxi home. My mate Brad had made the trip down from Napier to South Westland for an adventure, and what an adventure we had.